Okay, in this video we're going to continue with uh, JavaScript arrays. We're going to uh, create some functions uh, to sort of explore the functionality of the JavaScript array a little bit more. Um, so last time we talked about the basic operations and uh, we, we mentioned uh, the slice uh, method. And so uh, I can have uh, an array called fruits here. We've got apples, bananas, cranberries, dragon fruits. I can make another array uh, with the same exact value using the slice method. Now if I don't provide any arguments to the slice method, it's going to start at the zero slice and end at the end slice. And we're going to get everything in between. Right? I can specify one, um, one variable if I would like. So I, if I specified, uh, so this would be zero, one, two, I would start at the two and go to the end, right? something like that. Or I can specify um, multiple slices. Right? So this would be uh, the one slice to the two slice that would return these items. Okay, So for the sake of this example, we're going to just basically duplicate the original uh, fruits list. And what I want to show here, which we discussed in the last video, is that in JavaScript, when you compare two, uh, two arrays for equality, right? so fruits triple equals fruits2, Right, we're going to compare these for equality, and we're going to see um, <coughs> node this is, uh, quality array equality. There we go. False. So these two variables uh, are not considered to be true with the equality operator, the triple equals. So let's look at them. Console.log, and we're going to look at fruits, and then we will look at fruits too, and then we'll compare them, and we see that that says false. Right now, the reason this is true is because they're not the same list. If I wanted, uh, let's say, let fruits one equal fruits. Okay, this is basically just another identifier name, another variable name for the exact same list. Right, so here I can print out fruits one, and then so we've got fruits, fruits one, fruits two, and we'll see if uh, fruits is equal to fruits one, or if fruits is equal to fruits two. Okay, so we already know that this one is false. Uh, here, we've just created basically another variable name for the same thing. So if we run this, we see this is the case that is true. All right, so when you're always, when you're talking about triple equals, the result you get is when they are the exact same thing. Okay, so this is only ever true if these two lists are the same lists, and we know that we know they are the same lists because, for example, uh, if fruits, if I change a value, I'll say fruits, uh, the item at zero at, or at item um, at index zero is going to equal something else. Right? We know these are the same list because it should change it for both of them because they are the same list. Okay? And sure enough, because they're the exact same list, it changed both of them. So what do I mean by the exact same list? Well, the thing about these variables are they essentially are holding a memory location. They're holding an address in memory for JavaScript to go look and see what's there, see what data is stored there. And so fruits is holding an address in memory and at that address we have these items right stored and and the details of how exactly they're stored is unimportant the important bit is that this variable is actually in reality it's not holding this data it's holding an address a memory address that points to this data okay so when i say something like this i say fruits one equals fruits what i'm saying is create a new variable and all these variables, all they ever store is memory addresses. So copy the memory address location here at fruits, right? Which we know points to some er memory area in memory, and that area in memory happens to hold this stuff. But basically, we want a new variable that's uh, pointing to the exact same memory location. So these two items are the exact same thing because they're pointing to the exact same place in memory. Now, in this example, fruits two, we're creating a variable. And it's all it's going to have is is a uh, a pointer to a memory location essentially. Okay, so 
it's going to hold a memory location. But at that memory lo location, we're going to take what's held at fruits. So remember, fruits is just a memory location. So JavaScript must, must go and look and see what's at that memory location. It turns out it's this list. So then this variable is basically replaced by this list. And then we take a slice of that list, right, which is a slice of this. And that returns a brand new array that's stored somewhere in memory, right? And then we set wherever it's stored in memory equal to this variable name. Okay, so these variable names are always just, it, it's best to think of them as always just holding some sort of memory location. And when two items are exactly the same thing, for example, fruits and fruits one, the equality operation is true, right? That's because they both hold the exact same memory address. They're both pointing to the exact same memory or, or, or data in memory, rather. Okay. Here, even though the two items uh, have the same values, both, both are lists, and both lists store the same values, they're not the same item in memory, and that's provable because we modified one of them, right? and it changed when, when both the lists were the exact same, but it wouldn't change the other list, even though the other list held the same values previously. right? So we see apricots, apricots, and apples. All right, so that's that's very important way to look at um, look at these things. So uh, what we want to try to do here is make a function that will allow us to um, check the contents of the arrays and see if even if they're two different arrays, we want to check to see if they are uh, holding the same values, right? So let's see see if we can do that. So. Um, <clears throat> And let's go ahead and, and set fruits back to a new list. All right, so fruits now, I took a slice of fruits two. Fruits two was a slice of fruits one. But each time we take that slice, it's a new list. So fruits and fruits two uh, should now show that log. They should now hold the same values but be different list. Let me get my semicolon in there. All right. So that this there are two separate lists holding the same values. So we want to take we want to make a function here uh, that will check to see if if you if you provide it with two arrays, we'll check to see if the contents are the same, right? So we'll call this array uh, arrays equal. And this is gonna be array one and array two. Okay, so one thing to note here, uh, this is a complete function definition. Uh, it's just an empty function. So I can still call this as is, uh, but nothing will occur because there's no code in the function body, right? But it's still legal. You can create empty functions, and that's just fine in JavaScript. So here we can test this console.log uh, arrays equal, and we'll, we'll pass in fruits and fruits two. Okay, one thing that you'll notice in JavaScript is even though we have parameters defined here in, in our function definition, um, you don't necessarily have to provide parameters in JavaScript. It's very, very loose. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. It won't create an error. But in your code, you're still going to need to check for some of these things because logically, depending on your code, it might cause an error, error for you, right? So here we ran uh, this function. Right? We passed in two values and we got undefined back. Okay, That's because undefined is returned by default. So that's the same as if I have undefined in here. Right? So if I don't return a value, then the function automatically returns undefined. Right? So there's no difference between those two things. Right? Uh, another thing you'll notice is if I don't provide any arguments, there's no error. 
Okay, it just returns undefined just like it normally would. So I'm providing arguments, or I'm not providing arguments, but since I'm not doing anything here, like trying to, I'm not assuming these values store anything, we're fine. As soon as I try to access something, so as soon as I would do like console.log, let's look at array1.length. Okay. So now, because I'm using the dot operator with length, I'm assuming there's a value stored in this parameter. Okay. But here, I'm not passing any data in for that parameter. So if I don't pass any data in, then this is undefined. And so this is going to be undefined dot length, which is going to cause an error. Okay, cannot read property length of undefined. Okay, that's because I did not provide the argument in here. All right, so here we can do fruits and fruits too. And then this will be fine. Okay, it prints out the length. Okay, so this is where JavaScript is flexible, but you have to be aware of how it works. All right, so it's sort of nice behavior, but it can bite you if you don't know exactly how it works. All right, so we got these two arrays. The first thing we want to do is uh, let's let's make sure that we we have arrays, right? I could pass in something like um, hello. I run this. It has a length property, but it's not an array. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we're going to check to see if each one of these is a, an array. And there is a nice function built into the array constructor, array.isArray. And you can pass in an item. And that will be true if it is an array or false if it's not. Now, the reason we have to use array.isArray is because if we use type of, any of the complex collections in JavaScript are all type object. So an array is an object, it's just a special type of object. And technically in JavaScript, everything's an object. Um, but we'll get into that as we, as we uh, talk about objects in a little bit. All right, so here we have an array. We're checking to see if it is an array. So if array.isArray uh, for array1, but we want to see if it's not an array. If it's not an array, or array that is array for array two. And if that if that's not an array, I'm sorry. Or okay. So if either of these are not an array, return false. Okay. So array dot is array for array array one. This is basically saying if array one is not an array or array2 is not an array. If either one of these arrays, uh, or, or, or the item stored in these parameters, rather, is not an array, then we know the arrays aren't equal because they're not even arrays. So we can just return false. All right. So what this is going to do, this hello argument is going to be stored in this ARR1 parameter. right? And then array.isArray is going to check to see if this thing is an array. And it's going to come back and return false, which this not operator is going to invert that to true. And in an or statement, right? if one of the items is true, then the whole thing is true. So if this whole thing is true, we enter this code block, and then we return false. All right, so this one should return false. And it does, so that's good. So now let's go back to fruits. Uh, so how do we want to check to see if these items are equivalent? Well, we can, we can say for i, we'll make a for loop for let i equal 0, while i is uh, less than fruits.length i plus plus so we're going to we're going to make a list uh, or this index value 0 go from 0 to uh, 1 before the the value of the length of the list so that should be the index for every single item in the list and here we can check to see if each of the items are equal so 
if at any point array one the item at index i if it does not equal array two the item at index i if at any point so anytime through this loop, we can just stop the loop right there because we know that these arrays are not equal, right? The values in them are not equal. So this is where the individual comparison is happening. So I goes from every item in array one and compares it against that index item of array two. And at any point, if those two things are not equal, then that means the entire array is not equal so we can return false. If, however, on the other hand, we get all the way through this loop and we never go into this code block of returning false, then that means every single one of these comparisons was true, which means every single one of the elements in array one uh, equals the item at the same index for array two, which for our purposes is essentially saying that those arrays are equal. Right? They're not necessarily the same arrays, but they are, they are equal. Okay, so um, we would return true here. Right? So what this is doing is checking both of these two arrays to see if the elements are the same, if the elements are equal. Okay, we can run this and we see that these two are equal. All right? But what happens if we pass in a list, uh, two lists of different sizes? Right? Let's say fruits dot uh, our fruits to dot push. We're going to add an item here. Um, our elderberries. All right, so we add an item to fruits two. So really now, fruits and fruits two are two different sizes of lists. Right. So fruits two has one extra value in it. Okay. If we run this we get true, right? But we know that that's not true. If, if I move this up above our function definition, um, if we do this at the top here. So I'm changing fruits too. Sorry, that screen messed up a little bit there. So fruits too, I'm, I'm changing it. I'm adding uh, an initial uh, an additional entry so if we run this quite clearly fruits is different than fruits too but yet we're receiving true now why is that well it's because of the design of our for loop this is iterating from i equals zero to the length of fruits and up until that point both lists are the same but we never try to compare those last items because this for loop stops after we get to the, the end, an index that is the last index of fruits. Okay, so we iterate, we check, is this equal to that? Yep, is this equal to that? Yep, is this equal to that? Yep, this equal to that? Yep, and then it stops. We never check any further, right? And that's problematic because these are obviously not the same lists. They don't hold the same values. So what we need to do is at the very beginning of our function here, we need to have another if statement. We can say if um, array1.length does not equal array2.length return false. And what this does, this is going to ensure that these two arrays have to have the same length before you, we even try to compare. If they don't have the same length, then it's automatically false. Okay, so we see now that those are false. So, so, so that's good, that worked out. Um, now we can remove that addition. And we have a pretty good test to see if, if these items these two arrays are equal. Okay, And another thing we can do to add up here at the beginning is rather than, like, if the standard equality check works, 
then we don't really need to iterate through the whole list. Because if the lists have a million items in it, that's a lot of compute cycles, right? We can also just add another if statement. We can say if uh, array1 is equal to array2, then return true, because they're holding the same values. Okay, So this is the explicit case in JavaScript where you're actually checking to say, see if they're the exact same item in memory. And if they are the exact same item in memory, all of their elements are certainly the same. So we know right away that this one is true. All right, and so we could test that with, um, let's say, what is it? Uh, we can make fruits one equal to fruits. And then we can test fruits one and fruits. And since these are the exact same item, this will return true as well. Okay, so this is just a simple function that allows you to check to see if the contents of two arrays are equal.